Is Hex a scam? Today we are going to be researching as objectively as possible as to see if Hex is a scam, to see if Richard Hart is scamming people all over the place with this new Hexcoin. Well, Hexcoin is relatively new. They are creating Pulse Chain as a way to circumnavigate the high fees on Ethereum's blockchain. They're also, I believe, kind of upset that Ethereum went to proof of stake and got rid of the proof of work aspect, so they hard forked Ethereum in order to create Pulse Chain. They took a snapshot and they are migrating a lot of the efforts from Hex over to Pulse Chain. And hopefully their goal is to get as many people onto the network as possible. Beautiful. I need to make sure, I need to check that YouTube's actually live because multiple times I've gone live, researched, done whatever it was gonna do and go to check and see if YouTube's actually live and it's just not there. So it is live and running. Perfect. Let's get right into this. So for those of you who do not know, Hex is a ERC20, so Ethereum based cryptocurrency that offers 38% yield on average. Now this yield is generated from the inflation rate of the supply. The thing is that you can only get this yield through staking your Hex in what they call certificate deposits, CDs just like a bank has. These operate a little bit different than a traditional bank, but nonetheless it is a certificate of your deposit of Hex into these contracts. You're locking up your hex in a staking period and then they pay out the 3.69% inflation rate to the people who have staked. The only reason this supply, the only reason this yield is at 38% is because the majority of the hex is not staked. And we'll get into that a little bit down the road here, but I want to make that very clear. In a traditional CD, the reason that you're getting this yield in a bank when you go and deposit money into a CD, it's being generated from treasury notes. It's being generated from bonds. This is not that case. So they're not lending out your hex like in a traditional certificate of deposit. Also, the next person who follows me on here will be follower 5,555 on TikTok, and that is a lucky number for Hex. So I thought it was just kind of hysterical that it's right there, right about to happen. Um, yeah, so because my biggest question when it came to Hex was how are they generating this 38% yield on average? And let's see, Jesse Oakley, thank you so much for following me. Do you own any Hex? Are you just stopping by and wanted to be that lucky follower? Um, I think it's hysterical. If somebody could take a screenshot of the following list so that I could have it, so I could show a bunch of the hexagons. That's what they call themselves. It's not just me being ridiculous with it. If you guys are interested in following along, I'm live on YouTube as well right now. And so you guys can actually go over to YouTube and watch the entire thing and follow along on the screen. Or I will be reading all of it out loud to you guys as well. So you don't have to if you don't want to. I should pull up, I gotta pull up the chat just in case people actually do come over here. Pop out chat, scoop. Okay, now we're on Hex's website here and one of the first things they're toting to everyone is that 38% yield because that's how they're generating new users into their ecosystem. New people are drawn to Hex because they see 38% yield. Where is BTW going from here? That's not what we're talking about. I'm assuming you mean Bitcoin, Deep Hilton. Um, if I knew that, I wouldn't be here. I would be rich. So I don't know. We're, talk we're researching Hex right now. Sorry. And immediately you can go in and learn more about it or mine Hex. Again, Hex is a proof of stake. It's a proof of stake token. It's an ERC20 token. It's based on top of Ethereum. Hopefully in their mind, they will change that with Pulse, but I believe they're going, the Pulse network, but I believe they're going to try and benefit from both of them. Hex.com, Diamond. So what's interesting about Hex is that they have garnered the highest yield out of any asset ever, any crypto asset. Um, when they launched to now, it is appreciating faster than Bitcoin and Ethereum had appreciated in that same period of time. What's going on, Crypto for Change? Just stopping by, interested. Yeah, I'm, I'm overall bullish. Um, 
not on Hex. I'm not not saying I'm bullish on Hex. I'm just saying bullish on the markets, but I'm a perma bull. So we come over to the chart. Something that I like to look at because a lot of cryptocurrencies are extremely inflationary. I like to look at the inflation rate and we know that Hex is locked at an inflation rate of 3.69%. So that's a good thing for me. I'm going to just get right into the drama, the drama with Hex because a Richard Hart is the creator of Hex, and Richard Hart, if you ever watch interviews with him, he is one of the most arrogant people I've ever heard talk. He, yeah, he's extraordinarily arrogant. He said that he was already a multimillionaire by the time of 25, and essentially he wants to just kind of propel his name into fame by launching the most successful asset of all, kind, of all time. And these are his words. These are not my words. This is what he... Richard Hart has been saying. Yeah, so I pulled up, what is, there, what is a certificate of deposit? It is a savings product that earns interest on a lump sum for a fixed period of time. Because the money remains untouched for the entirety of the term or risk penalty fees are lo or loss of interest. CDs, because you're locking up the funds in historical manner, can pay out a higher yield because the bank knows that you're not going to touch that money. It's locked up. And if you do touch it, then the bank gets to keep some of the money as a penalty to you. And they're similar here, only Hex is not being loaned out. I already took notes on things, so let me go ahead and open up my notes because I feel like while I had a bunch of pages open, the flow is not there. It sounds like I'm just toting Hex. Because Hex is an ERC-20 token, we have to go look at Etherscan because Etherscan is going to have all of the Hex data on it. And you can see, like point blank, the very first wallet, Pulse Chain Sacrifice, is 43% of the supply right now. So that's kind of a huge amount, but that's because they're about to launch um, a hard fork to Ethereum. Pulse Chain is a hard fork of Ethereum. They copy pasted the code from Ethereum and took a snapshot of all of the wallets on Ethereum's address and then just snapped it across over into Pulse Chain. You the new Andrew Tate of crypto? <laughs> um, that's for everyone else to decide, I guess. Hopefully I'm not doing the same things Andrew Tate's been doing. I'm, I'm going to get right into my findings and I'll just discuss it with you guys see what everyone thinks the main scrutiny behind well let's not even get into the scrutiny yet let's let's make sure that everyone understands what the point of hex is Richard Hart created hex and launched the entire product did not have any updates to the network hex is what hex is they launched it and Nobody's working on it. There's not a dev team to work on Hex, the token itself. Hex is not a coin. Hex does not have its own blockchain right now. Hex is a product of Ethereum. So if Hex wins, Ethereum wins. I just want to say that. They launched it and no one's working on it, meaning that it should not be considered a security because there's no centralized team that's working on Hex. I'm not saying that Hex is totally decentralized in its concentration of holders. Even Richard Hart, the creator of Hex, acknowledges that it is centralized, but his claim is the holdings are centralized. His claim is, when was the best time to buy Bitcoin or Ethereum? It was when Satoshi only had, Satoshi held 100% of the Bitcoin. That was the lowest it ever was. So at its most centralized point is when it was the best to purchase it. And he, he has been on record saying this multiple times. So Hex, same exact thing applies in his book. The point of Hex is that the only reason people make an investment into cryptocurrency or any asset is to make money. So Hex was created to incentivize people to lock up their funds to push the price higher. Let me say it again. Hex was created to go up in value. That was the entire point of Hex. There's not a utility behind it. 
The only thing hex is supposedly good for is to go up in value. That's the claim, which is why it gets a lot of scrutiny because what does that sound like? If you're completely, literally, you're completely relying on new people to come into the space to push it up, that sounds a lot like a scam. That sounds a lot like a Ponzi scheme. So that is the majority of why people are, are anti-hex is because it just is kind of gross. Did it launch today? No, Hex has been around for a while. Did you see my message on which platform, Crypto Ukraine? Ukraine, Ukrainian? Oh, Ukrainian, sorry. Um, reading is tough, man, reading is tough. Yeah, Tate's not been doing anything recently. That's facts, that's facts. Dude's been locked up. Initially, when Hex was launched, they took a snapshot of Bitcoin holders and Bitcoin holders were able to go and connect their wallet to Hex and then they got airdropped the new tokens. And some of the largest Ethereum whales were also airdropped Hex. And this happened at effectively zero. These tokens were sent out at pretty much zero, which is why they look like the most appreciating assets ever launched because they launched at pretty much zero. They just got airdropped in everyone's wallet as a worthless coin, hoping that new people would come in. Now, there was one wallet, the origin wallet, which most of these came from. And it, what's going on, Crypto Recon? And this, this wallet, nobody knows who owns it. There's a lot of speculation that it is Richard Hart who owns it. And I think there's some validity to this statement because this wallet then sent out a lot of the coins to let me hold on i might shut off the youtube live stream because i'm really just talking to the screen here well yeah we'll keep it up it's kind of pointless having it up right now though this origin wallet sent out money sent out hex to a ton of daughter wallets like hundreds of daughter wallets and they just kind of spread it across everywhere the daughter wallets have not staked the daughter wallets richard believes will not stake which is why people believe that he owns all of them because if they stake if the daughter wallets choose to stake the yield is going to drive down the reason people come into hex is because it has a 40 percent yield so if these daughter wallets were to stake the reason why new members are coming into the hex community would disappear thus they would not be able to onboard nearly as many people because nobody wants a three percent yield in crypto that's laughed at but a 40 percent yield in crypto they're like okay that's high but that's not extremely high that's kind of doable so it's like that that's the reason why people believe that richard hart owns all of it and so if you're investing in hex there's no way to prove this this is just a theory it's a pretty valid theory but if you're investing into hex you have to understand that that is probably the major risk because the code has been audited the code looks pretty nice it's literally just you're gambling that richard hart's not going to dump on everyone or whoever these whales are aren't going to just dump all at once that's the gamble here appreciate the info i sacrificed for pulse x treating it like a lotto ticket. That's kind of what I was gonna get at with Barry. This is a lottery ticket. Like, if it does what it says it's going to do, then the upside is like a thousand X from here. A thousand X, not a thousand percent, a thousand X. But you're gambling on the fact that Richard Hart or whoever owns all these wallets isn't going to just dump it because if they stake or dump, if they do anything with the wallets, it gets destroyed. The entire thing gets destroyed because you'd lose faith. Faith. It would be like if Satoshi just started started selling some of his Bitcoin. Be like people would flee Bitcoin like crazy. It, they would lose all faith in Bitcoin. The price would dump to a limit function of zero. It's the same thing here. Only Satoshi owns one million to coins for Bitcoin, and these daughter wallets in the Origin wallet owns like like seventy percent of the coins. And I like you can you can see it. It's all on chain. And I was gonna bring it up, but I don't remember. Cause this is this is the pulse sacrifice. But the the other thing is like when when you sacrificed your coin to pulse, you you're giving it to Richard Hart. You're giving it to him. That's yeah. You, 
Maybe you have any thoughts on this, Barry, but like you're giving it to Richard Hart when you sacrifice. Thoughts on ETH? What would you like to know? I have a lot of thoughts on ETH. It would take up the whole live stream, but right now we're trying to discuss Hex. So let's see, I wrote down a bunch of notes. I might as well just read them off to you guys. Is Hex a security? I don't think Hex is gonna be deemed a security, um, purely because there is no central body that like is dictating where the market goes necessarily. If it comes out that there is, and Richard Hart is driving the market, then it will be deemed a scam, not a security. So if if Richard Hart owns the majority, he claims owns majority, which he claims is true, but we can't verify, then you're gambling you will support he will support the network like Satoshi. He is Hex's Satoshi. He claims to be rich already and has a ton of expensive stuff with him all the time, all of his watches, his necklace, all the chains. He surrounds himself with products that validate his net worth in the eyes of the viewer. This is so that you have a level of trust. This is a game that he's playing, in my opinion. So that you trust him, that he's not just gonna dump on you, that he's not just doing it for all the money. He's trying to do it to let his name cement in history as the individual who created the most price appreciating asset. And that's what he hints at a lot. That's why he has so much expensive things around him is so that you believe him when he says he's super wealthy. The goal is to on-ramp as many people as possible to increase the overall value of the token. He, I, I believe that he owns all of the daughter wallets. I believe he's in charge of most of the network. And so I'm just gonna operate under that assumption here. He owns all of the daughter wallets and he is stopping them from staking. By stopping them from staking, he's increasing the rate that, he's increasing the price of Hex. He is, by not allowing the daughter wallets to stake, he is boosting the yield for people and that's attractive and people come into the network. It's a, it's a marketing ploy. What else do I have? Yeah, the people can't look. You can't tell who owns all of it. You can't. You can't see it. You're taking a gamble. I guess it's not as in depth as I thought. Is hex a scam? What do you guys think? Like Logan Paul and how SBF was the charity guy. Um, I don't know how Logan Paul plays into it, but SBF did spin a narrative to seem like he was just a philanthropist. You get a penalty for unstaking early or unstaking late. Yes. And there was actually a case where one of the daughter wallets or multiple daughter wallets for Hex hadn't unstaked and the two weeks was coming up and somebody paid the gas fees to unstake so that they wouldn't be penalized. It's kind of interesting, like someone in their community or whatever. Again, Richard Hart totes freedom of movement, freedom of assembly, freedom of speech through Hex. That's what he is saying. That's what he believes. But yes, if you lock up, let's say you lock up your hex and the minimum locking period is a day. The maximum locking period is 15 years, I believe. If you withdraw before the halfway point, you lose, I believe, all of it. You lose all of your money. So the locking period matters a lot, actually. And you can see when all of it is going to be unlocked. I'm actually on one of the websites that, that shows you when when the majority is going to be unlocked. Oh, if after that halfway point, after that 50% staking period passes, it's the, the rate of your penalty goes down until you get to the point where it's going to unlock and then you have two weeks to unlock it. And then if something happens and you can't unlock it in that two weeks, after that you lose 1% until 100 weeks have passed and you've lost everything. $1,500 for 26 million points with bonuses. I'll take that. If I did that with Hex, it'd be 18 million. So you're saying with Pulse Chain, so it's worth your $1,500 gamble. But, okay, so you but you understand that like you are effectively just giving it to Richard Hart and you're comfortable with that. You've, you've taken your risk assessment because yes, if it goes the way that he is claiming it's gonna go, if it goes the way that the potential is, then yeah, the $1,500 would be some gross amount of money 
is just I don't want people thinking it's guaranteed money or free money because it is speculation. It is just a gamble. Yeah, okay. And then we have Pulse Chain. Simple explanation. Pulse Chain is being created because Richard Hart does not appreciate the high gas fees for Hex. So Ethereum fees are extremely expensive, especially if the network is really congested. You might end up paying like $20, $50, $100 just to move $20 worth of value. And because Hex is an ERC-20 token, so it's based on Ethereum's network, sorry, they have to be, they have to pay those gas fees. So to get around that, Hex's team, Richard Hart, Hex doesn't technically have a team, but Richard Hart put together a team to create Pulse Chain. And what Pulse Chain is doing is taking a snapshot of Ethereum before Ethereum had the proof of stake update when it was still proof of work because he likes the security that comes with proof of work. And so he's take, he took a screenshot and they are forking the network. They are forking Ethereum into Pulse Chain. And then they're gonna airdrop a bunch of PLS tokens based off of, or I guess those would be coins because Pulse Chain would have its own native currency, which would be PLS. And they are airdropping all of that to whoever burns some of their crypto in exchange for this. Hex looks good. We got XRP away. What's going on, bro? Thank you for being here. I wonder if people sacrifice Hex for Pulse Chain. A lot. Yeah, they did a lot. You can go on Etherscan and see the Pulse X sacrifice. I believe that um, Pulse X was people sacrificed, yeah, half a billion dollars worth of Hex for Pulse X. And then Pulse Chain... You can go and see on um, Etherscan that Pulse, yeah. It gets kind of confusing because it, 100,000 million billion. It says that $19.4 billion on Etherscan was sacrificed into Pulse X. And it, from my understanding, that, that means they would have had to convert everything into Hex before sacrificing it because it says it's 43% of the supply of Hex. But it's kind of confusing. That part, that part gets confusing, but the general premise of it is that people sacrificed, they forked Ethereum before the merger so they could still have proof of work on Ethereum to validate Hex because Hex is built on top of it. And then they took a screenshot of everyone's wallets and they're going to airdrop everyone some amount of, of pulse chain based off of how much of qualifying crypto they're willing to burn. So if they burned Ethereum or we can actually go see what most of the people burned. Hex, Ethereum, USD, Tether... Uh, Polygon, da why do I keep, I like know what this is, but I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. What's the point of Hex? Lotus, the point of Hex as described by Richard Hart, the creator of Hex. Actually, can you guys get it to 500 likes? If you guys get it to 500 likes for, the, for me telling you what the point of Hex is, it's point blank to make money. There is no other point of Hex. There is no utility behind Hex. The entire point of Hex is to make people money. That's what Richard Hart has claimed many, many times. So just so you know, I don't want anyone being confused to think that there's real, like, anything other than that. He has said that the only thing people care about in crypto is making money, and so he's giving people that. He's giving people the, abil the ability to make money. So just, just to be clear. Hex is similar to Bitcoin in ways of privacy. Yes, they, Hex, in a lot of ways, they modeled after Bitcoin. Um, and in a lot of ways, they didn't because it is very different. But like Bitcoin still has some inflation to it. And it, Hex claims to be deflationary. Although I couldn't really find too much validity to that, especially with the... I guess you could just look because they have a set inflation rate. And so then you could look and see how many people are not actually claiming everything or breaking stake. What's going on, Digital Oil? Thanks for stopping by. Then just stake it. Yeah, the whole point of Hex is just to stake it. All right, what else was I... I was going to rant about other things too with it. Oh, 
Yeah, well, so this this is where you would get into looking into Richard Hart, okay? Because we've established we've established that there is a massive level of centralization to Hex. I don't think anyone's denying it. Richard Hart is even not denying it. Richard Hart fully understands that there's a lot of centralization with it. He also claims that, like, we don't know, technically speaking, who's in control of all of the supply of Hex. I believe... It's probably Richard Hart. That's just me. And that's because most of the hex is unstaked. I think only like 15% of hex is staked. Most of it is unstaked to allow for the people who are staked to generate a high yield. That brings people into the market, into hex's ecosystem, because it looks like you can get 40% for doing nothing. And then that drives the token price up, making people money. That's the whole point. That's the whole little system, which is why people call it a Ponzi scheme. Hex is great, not amazing, but it's better than most. Hex is definitely interesting. I see a lot of stuff about Hex all over the place, and so I figured it was just time to look into it and kind of report my findings here. I'm on YouTube as well, but I'm not really using it. I'm just kind of going off the head here with it. Um, the YouTube live stream is definitely not it today, but if you want to go over, I'd appreciate you guys saying hi. Oh, there's David's Finance Club. What's going on? Is there something you don't know about crypto? <laughs> a lot of things, bro. How long ago was this? I didn't have the chat pulled up. My bad, dude. Um, I love, I'm a big fan of David's Finance Club. He's heavy on YouTube and Instagram, but... Are your eyelashes real? Yes. <laughs> Nothing fake about me. I'm just waiting for Pulse to launch. Yeah. The, so what's interesting with how they got Pulse is that they took... Corium is the next one that I wanted to research because all you guys changed your profile photos, Lotus. Um, I wanted to look into it and see if I could shit on it and then get attention to it. But I haven't looked into it yet. I'm going to go into it without bias like I did with all of this. Like I went into Hex not really liking it and I come out of it not really against it anymore. So spoiler alert. But I do there is a massive risk. Okay, back on back onto it. If Richard Hart controls most of the wallets, which I believe he does, and we went over the whole point of it, then you're relying on him. There's a massive trust factor. Just like you're trusting Satoshi with Bitcoin not to dump, you're trusting hack um Richard Hart to do right by you guys. Mr. Doodle Poodles, what's going on, boss? Thank you for being here. But you can't prove it, so it's probably not going to be proved to security because you can't prove who owns most of the crypto until it's too late. And if if Richard Hart moves anything, then the whole thing probably just crumbles, right? So by the time you realized it's a security, it would all be over anyways. How are you not against Hex after looking into it? I'd trust Richard Hart with my life. Those are very contradictory things, bro. <laughs> very contradictory. Yeah, I can do a live for ETH. Probably not. I do lives, research lives on Wednesday. Otherwise, we're just talking about stuff. But absolutely, if you come back tomorrow at 1 p.m., we could talk about ETH more. People talk about Hex out loud. It makes more sense to not hate on it as much. Yeah, a lot of the, I think that a lot of the people who are in Hex are just such strong believers that they go around to people's live streams or they go around and leave comments like Hex fixes this when... I'm sorry, but Hex does not fix most of the problems. Hex is just a vehicle for people to maybe make money. Hex does not fix a lot of the problems. I don't, I don't care what anyone says. It like just point blank doesn't. It doesn't have that functionality. And so when people go around saying Hex solves this, Hex fixes this, Hex is the savior of every human on the entire... It's like it just makes everyone think that you guys are part of a cult and it doesn't make any sense. Like it's, it's ridiculous. Are you even listening to this, Bukaki? You're spitting Bukaki. What do you like? Just sit there and wait. You just joined. Give it a minute. The hex. The. Yeah. Okay. I keep going back to my notes because I keep getting sidetracked with all of this, but. Because I don't, I don't have a flow for this one. This one 
I just spent so much time looking into Hex before I came on here that I didn't actually end up getting my thoughts in progress. But you're relying on Richard Hart, in my eyes. The reason why Richard Hart wears all this expensive clothing and all this expensive jewelry and all this claims to be a multimillionaire before he even started Hex and says that he's some altruistic genius. He's building this reputation so that you trust him more. Because if you believe that Richard Hart is extremely wealthy and doesn't need any more money like he pers like he projects to everyone, then you're going to believe he's not going to dump all of the coins that he has, all of the hex that he owns. And you're going to be more willing to sacrifice your crypto to him in exchange for Pulse, which he willingly tells you is going to be worth nothing when he airdrops into your wallet, which is for taxation purposes, he claims. So you are willing to give your money to Richard Hart. That, that's why he puts on this persona. He needs to look extremely wealthy. He needs to look like a genius. He needs to have that cult aspect where he's the leader so that everyone trusts him so that they go into it and stake up their crypto for 15 years. The risk is you stake for 15 years because you're gonna get 40% compounded over that time. If you, let's, let's go to a compound interest calculator. Don't even give me, someone remind me in a minute when I'm done with this rant to talk about um, the market cap of Hex versus the inflation versus the, the staked pools. Please somebody remind me to talk about Hex's market cap, okay? Let's say you put in $1,000 into Hex and you don't have any monthly contributions. The length of time in years, you stake it up for the 15% and your estimated interest rate is 40%. Because that's what it is right now. You could lock in a potential yield for 40%. Um, we're not even going to do that. And it annualizes daily. It it compounds daily. At the end of the 15 years, you would have $400,000 if you staked $1,000 and it all continued to play out. That's not... That's That's insane. That's ridiculous. That's... Ludicrous. The 40% is not going to remain. The 40% yield is only because those a majority of hex is not staked. And that not staked hex is owned by people who have an incentive to not stake it. They have an incentive to bring new people into hex's ecosystem. That is, whether or not it's Richard Hart, you are completely reliant on all of those wallets who are not staking. The moment they start staking, yield dries up and you don't make as much money and this goes away because there's no such thing as completely free money anywhere. You have to do something, you have to take on some level of risk. The moment you're locked up in a 15 year stake and they see that they had that viral moment, as soon as Hex goes viral, and I will predict this and I'll put my neck out to say this, the moment that Hex goes viral, in my opinion, and we see a ton of people come in and lock it up for 15 years, within a seven year period of that, once the virality has kind of died down a little bit and everyone's locked in their contracts and if they break the contract, they'll lose all of it. When that happens, those wallets that haven't moved or haven't staked, dump. They sell everything, they get out. They take all their money and they leave. That's my fully, completely honest opinion on Hex. In the scenario that that doesn't happen, you get extremely, extremely wealthy for putting money into Hex. In the scenario that that dump never occurs, you would make a shit ton of money off of Hex. I just, I think that it's not worth putting a lot of your money into. I think you could maybe gamble on it if you want to, understanding that this there's a more likelihood of this happening than not happening. The way it doesn't happen is if Richard Hart is in fact in control of the majority of supply of Hex and he really does just want his name to go down in history as the person who created the most appreciating asset ever. He has some massive ego. He's kind of, yeah, he just, he just has a massive ego and he just wants his name to go down in history. That is the scenario in where it ends up performing really well. But in my opinion, that is a very risky gamble to take. If you show no patience or discipline, you deserve no glory. Valid. Very valid statement. Okay, now 
I remembered myself to look into the market cap thing. So Richard Heck, yeah, Richard Hex. <laughs> Richard Hart claims that a thin order book is better than a really thick order book. For everyone who doesn't know what that means, that means that Richard Hart is claiming that the less volume, the less transactions a network has, the better it is for the network. Now, if you go to sell a million dollars worth of something that doesn't have a really thick order book, if you try and go sell a million dollars worth of... So the question is if he's a good person or not. In my... Yes. Yeah. 100%. And that's a personal decision. You got to decide that. Wargate. What's going on, dude? Crypto's all a gamble and Hex is a gamble. Gamble that could make a lot. Risk is better than Bitcoin. I don't think the risk is better than Bitcoin at all because in... Yeah, not, not, I don't think it's better than Bitcoin at all. I think that it could... I could see people's justification as to why Hex is worth a gamble, but a small portion, like your gambling fund, not your entire net worth put into these CDs hoping that you can retire in 10 years. That's just not... That's not at all... And yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, it is. It is completely BS. Crypto recon. Um, so if I had a million dollars, how do I? It's hard to put this in an accurate way. So I can't really give you exact numbers, but I am going to give you like quick examples as to what I mean. If, say, the average volume for a cryptocurrency or any asset that you're trying to change or trying to sell is a million of those a day, a million units per day, and you have a million of those units that you want to sell in a single day, if you double the volume of a typical day and all of it is sell volume, the normal market is not going to have enough buyers to hold up the price. It's called market manipulation, really. That's what whales do when they dump and manipulate the market down. When you dump a lot onto the free open market at once, it destroys the price of something. Now, you can do a limit order, but people are going to see that, and the psychology is going to have the same effect. Your limit order is probably never going to get filled unless there's a grossly high demand for that asset. But again, if that's the case, then the volume is probably not in that in that range where it would have the price impact by dumping a lot on the market. So if we go look at HEX on coin market cap, HEX um, coin market cap, and we go look at the volume of HEX traded in each day versus its market cap versus some of its peers, what we end up finding, is there a way, where's the volume? 24 hour volume divided by market cap is 0 0.0014, okay? ETH, Ethereum coin market cap, although this might not be the best example. Let me find something that has a similar market cap. All right, we're gonna find something that has a similar market cap to HEX right now. Where is HEX on this chart? Hex is down pretty low in market cap. 100,000 million billion. Uh, not that low, I guess. Where the hell is Hex? Is Hex not on coin market cap? That's hysterical. All right, well, I can see the volume right here. So. The market cap for HEX is supposedly 13.8 billion. So if we go to something that's comparable and we see that right here, Cardano has 13.8 billion. We click on Cardano and the 24 hour volume divided by market cap for Cardano is 5.8%. For HEX, it's 0.14%, okay? So the 24 hour volume for HEX is uh, what is that? It's such a small fraction of it. It's 19 million. So much knowledge here. Thank you, David. I appreciate you, boss. The the 24 hour volume, so one day's worth of volume for Hex is 19 million. For Cardano, it is 365 million, which means that Cardano's order book is a lot th thicker than Hex. If you had 
If you needed to sell a million Cardano, you would be able to, very simply. It might cause the market to go down a little bit because that's a big order to just all of a sudden hit the market with, but it's not gonna do too much to the price. If you did it to Hex, it would cause a bigger impact on the price, right? Because it would be 1 20th of the total volume versus 1 656th of the total volume. You know what I mean? We up 400 on Hex past 30 days. Yeah, like I said, Hex's entire point is to go up in price. It doesn't have a utility other than to hopefully go up in price. So it's, it's fulfilling its purpose right now, so I guess. We'll see how long it lasts for. But that, that is the entire point of Hex. Make no mistake, it does not fill any service to anyone. It just is to make Richard Hart look like a genius, to create the coin that did the, the most performing out of any asset in mankind's recorded history. Quote from him. I mean, paraphrased from him. He, so his claim here is that that's better because when you have more volume, the market makers and the centralized exchanges are the ones making money. And by not having a lot of volume, it shows that most people are holding on to their hex. What's going on, Megalol? Thanks for joining. By not having a lot of volume, it shows that most of the people in hex are just holding on to it. They're staking it. They're not trading it. But most of the people on Cardano are trading it. They're not locking it up. They're not... Or most of the people on Cardano are, are trading it. And so that's making the market makers rich. That's making the exchanges rich. But in Hex, by not having any volume, it's making the hexagons rich. That's his logic behind that. And it, I think it's kind of asinine to say. I just think it's ridiculous claim to be making. That claim itself is not ridiculous, but the, 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 the jump that he made after that is ridiculous, where he's saying that it would have no impact on the price if a major order started to sell. All right, we got someone here who gets it. Wargate, I'm completely butchering. Why does everyone have f and complicated names? I was wondering since, since SVB got bailed out, does that mean crypto will come back down? Um, I have no idea, Megalol. I think no, because it kind of signals that they're starting to turn the money printers on, which is why everything started pumping. Um, do you have a nine to five or are you upper middle class and don't need to report to the man every day? No, I am just taking the ultimate gamble on myself. I, I got fired literally a year ago in 15 days. It'll be a year ago. And then I've been trying to create a company for myself. I mean, went through like a period of six to eight months where I was just super depressed and didn't know what I was doing, but now I'm trying to do something for my own. So not part of the upper middle class. Probably, not po probably, in poverty for sure right now, but hopefully not for too long. Um, Katie, probably, I don't know, man, or lady, girl, I don't know. It could be worth the gamble, but I think the most likely outcome with SVB is that they end up getting purchased. And it, so I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know that I know enough about it to fully make that. It could be worth the gamble, but I don't think I would consider that an investment. Okay, so Richard Hart claims that this market cap of $13.8 is ludicrous. And it's because it's the diluted market cap or the circulating market cap, not the fully diluted market cap. So the fully diluted market cap being all of the coins that could be in circulation at a single point. So for Bitcoin, the fully diluted market cap is the 21 million, even though 19 million are in circulation. And when you're counting the circulating market cap or the market cap that everyone uses for Bitcoin, they even take out Satoshi's Bitcoin because it hasn't moved and they take out Bitcoin that's been stationary that is deemed to be lost. And so they do that for most coins. Richard Hart claims that's kind of stupid to do because then you're harming the people who've staked their hex and not including them in the total market cap. So he believes since only like 15% of hex is in circulation that you should count all of the coins in the, the total market cap. And it, I just think that's a little ridiculous because that would put the total 
who who just requested to join i'll let you up in one second if you i got a spiel here i just it popped back in my head i promise i'll let you up in one second don't go anywhere if uh, shit it's like i need to write it down because it keeps coming and going the the 14 billion dollar market cap is only based off of the hex that's not in circulation and so by including the hex that is staked or that hasn't moved in a while what's going on aced database the market cap is somewhere north of a hundred billion according to, to Richard Hart which is just kind of ludicrous because that that like that's not how market caps work and it shows that like only a small portion of hex is really available to trade the rest of it's not on the market so you can't include that in the market cap because if you go to to sell a billion dollars worth of hex like it's gonna get destroyed it doesn't have the liquidity the order books to support that kind of a sale hopefully i'm making sense he claims hex is like a hundred two hundred billion dollar market cap but that doesn't it's not like that at all because if you go to actually use some of that market cap it just gets annihilated okay let me unplug my mic sorry for the youtube stream and accept crypto recon Recon. Oh, 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 oh. Crypto Recon Queen. Honestly, I butcher everyone's name, so I'm sorry for that, but I know, I know. what's going on? The more that I hear, you know, I actually, a lot of people, I have a lot of head sick and friends that have been telling me how wonderful is Hex, and the more you talk about it, the less inclined that I feel I want to get in that. It's like I hear all this BS, and I'm like, okay, so... If you're that great, why you are not in market cap, right? You you don't have anything, barely. Yeah. Uh, there's too much mystery and shrouded, you know. So for me, that actually gives me like, ooh, you know, like a like a warning. Type right. Of thing, right. Yeah, I think that most people who like take the time to actually listen or see what is going on kind of behind closed doors with hex people get a little scared about it maybe not scared but like sketched out the red flags start popping up and yeah i think it's a good thing for people to at least acknowledge them if they still if they know of it and still want to take that risk that's their choice but yeah and it sounds um cultish too like you were saying it sounds like a maxi you know like this ultra max type of thing i'm I like ISO coins, so but I, I don't think they're gonna fix all the problems, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's gonna be a lot of coins that are gonna be that have utility that are gonna help certain issues. So uh, uh, ISO two zero two two. Um, anyway, do research on that. <laughs> that's another. Yeah. <laughs> that's another yeah a, 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 another monkey wrench there. Yeah, the the ISO coins are very intriguing because I think over the long term they will have a decent um, role in a lot of the financial system. But I think a lot of people are getting overly excited over them because they think like this weekend or, or in the next few months there's just going to be a magic switch. But yeah. I don't think it's a switch, it's a gradually dimming. Yeah, it's like the... the Banks and institutions and countries don't need to be compliant till like the end of 2025 So it's gonna take a while before all this plays in and if, yeah, so I think a long-term investment these ISO coins are probably gonna be pretty decent No use case for ISO coins cross-border payments on demand liquidity What are you talking about as liquidity? I mean seriously people what are you talking about? <laughs> Security interoperability and scalability as extensively. I mean Hello, I, I'm more used than Hex, from what I've seen. Do your research, people. Like, seriously. Honestly. I'm to, oh, my God. I'm, I'm looking at stuff, and I'm like, oh, please. Just, like, uh, do your research. Seriously, guys. It's, it's, any person with a, with, with, a, with a computer and Google can find information. Everything has more use case than Hex. No, I was just going to say. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. Like anything that's more used than, than, than hex, right? Uh, but still, question: the people that are are there any hexagon here? So anybody stay hex? Is is it real that they pay you all that, or 
is the other question that I wanted to ask. I'm like, because I never, you know, right? Yeah, I believe that it does. It's just they've incentivized people to continue to lock it up. So after they've received their payout, nobody really accepts it. They kind of like lock it again and again. Um, I am going to close out of my YouTube live stream because it's like they can't see you, probably can't hear you, but... I appreciate all of you guys if you're watching this on YouTube. I will see you guys next week.